Hi, and welcome to the Unit 6 study guide. We're talking about experimental probability. You know, in general, this whole unit is about probability. And <clears throat> I'm going to start with just running through this real quick. And we have to make sure that we can use probability to solve real world, real world problems. In this, we're going to be exploring key vocabulary here. And through this example, uh, so what's the probability of picking a red marble from a jar of five green and two red? Well, P stands for probability and probability of picking a red marble, okay, which is our objective here. So the number of red marbles is two from our scenario and the total number of marbles is seven. So two out of seven. Our second example here is uh, for one month, uh, the doctor recorded information about new patients as as shown in the table. So senior adult, young adult, and child. So what's the probability that a new patient is a female adult? So a female, female adult is 8 out of a total of 60 patients. So if you add all these numbers together, you get 60. So 8 out of 60 simplifies to 2 out of 15. Or a new patient is a child. So a new patient is a child. So you can add up both of these 14 and 17 is 31 out of the same 60 uh, uh, patients that we have all together. Okay, so that's that's all done. And so let's talk about these here. Rolling, what's the probability of each event? Rolling a five on a fair number Q, which is a die. So rolling a five, how many fives are there? Well, there's only one five on a number cube. There's only one of them on there. And there's six sides. There's six different numbers on a number cube. And so there you go. One out of six. Number two, picking a seven from a standard deck of cards. Uh, you know, let me show you something about a deck of cards. And so what I have here is a deck of cards. And I'm going to yeah, bring this over here just to show you, because a lot of people don't know what a deck of cards involves. There are four suits. So there's uh, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and there's ace, which often is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then these are the suits, jack, queen, king. And there's a, so each suit has its own set. And each of these, there should be 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And 13 times four is uh, 52, I think. So 13 times 4 is 52. So there's 52 cards in a deck. Okay, so uh, that's pretty important usually when we have this. So picking seven cards from a standard deck of 52 cards. Okay, a standard, okay, yeah, four cards. Okay, so seven, well, it should just be um, uh, picking seven from a standard deck of cards. And if we look at this, picking a seven, well, what we can see here is there are four sevens here. So that would be four out of a total of 52 cards. See how that works. Now, so this would be uh, four out of 52. Okay. Next, picking a blue marble from a bag of four red marbles, six blue and one white. Well, how many do we have all together? Uh, let's see, we have uh, four plus six is 10. Uh, we have 11 total and picking blue marbles, so six. So it'd be six out of 11, pretty easy. And rolling a number greater than seven on a 12-sided number cube. So on a 12-sided number cube, there's 12 sides. Oops. There's 12 sides and number greater than seven. Well, that means there's eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12. How many numbers is that? It looks like it's five. So it'd be five out of 12. That is the probability. All right, let's move on to the next page here, which is right here. Uh, Christopher picked coins randomly from his piggy bank and uh, and got the number of coins shown in the table. Okay, so we got all that. And uh, what? Uh, find the experimental probability. So the next coin is going to be a quarter. Well, how many quarters are there? There are six. 
and out of how many total when you add up all of our numbers here 7 and 2 is 9 17 uh, plus 6 is 23 so this is 6 out of 23 how about the next coin uh, it is not a quarter well how many are not quarters uh, 23 minus so six of them are quarters so that's 17 so 17 out of the total coins is still 23 okay what about the probability the next coin picks is a penny or a nickel so that would be 9 that would be 9 out of 23 so let's do 9 out of 23 the next one is a grocery store manager found 54% of customers usually bring their own bags. One afternoon, 84, 82 out of 124 customers brought their own grocery bags. Did a greater or lesser number of people usually bring their bags? Well, we need to take uh, 82 and divide it by 124. And I have uh, a little calculator here. I'm punching in 82 divided by 124 and that's 66 percent so it's about 66 percent and so I would say uh, yeah more customers uh, a greater number of people uh, yeah so uh, more bags that okay brought that uh, that afternoon okay so we go from the experimental probability to the theoretical probability and I'm not going to labor this example too much but I will explain it briefly so she rolls two fair number cubes so two dice what's the probability the two numbers that Lola rolls include at least one four and have a product of at least 16. So let's see. There are five pairs of number cubes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the that's one cube and the other cube. And um, there are five pairs of number cubes that include a four and have a product of at least 16. So oh, let, let me review this. What's probably that the number at least one four and have a product of at least 16 so here's a four here's a four so right there uh, so the number of ways is five let me see if I can identify those five uh, I'll circle them so um, include a four and have a product oh four and four so four and four okay four and five so these two here and uh, five and four okay yeah and six and four and four and six so those are the five right there and what and and then so that's where the five comes from all those circled and then the um, the this number the 36 that comes from all of those there's 36 different possibilities okay uh, suppose Lola rolls the two uh, number cubes 180 times for how many times she will roll the number cubes and include a pair of numbers like the ones described above so we have our probability of 5 over 36 and you just multiply by 180 and what 5 times 180 and then divide by 36 is 25 there you go let's get back to the last page here oh uh, what, what we have here is a second example so a store has a sale bin of soup cans there are six cans in the chicken noodle soup eight cans of split pea and eight cans of minestrone and 13 cans of vegetable soup find the probability of picking each type of soup that at random then predict what type of soup the customer was likely to pick so there's if you add up 6 and 8 and 8 and 13 you should get 35 so that's where we get 35 on all of those the sum of all those numbers and then it's just simply chicken noodle probability of chicken noodle is 6 out of 35 and then 8 out of 35 and another 8 uh, oh that's 
the eight of split p okay so there's that one and then eight of minestrone there's that one even though they're the same and 13 of vegetable soup done so what's the most probability that well it'd be vegetable soup because it's 13 out of 35 and that's why they pick vegetable soup okay find the probability of each event um graciela picks a white mouse at random from a bin of eight white mice and two gray mice and two brown mice okay uh so what's the probability of her getting a white mouse uh well there's eight out of eight plus two plus two which is eight out of twelve which is this i guess we could probably um simplify this to two-thirds Theo spins a spinner and has 12 equal sections marked 1 through 12. It does not land on 1. So how many choices do we have? We have 11, 11 choices out of the total 12. Because it's not landing on 1, but it can land on 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Um, Patty tosses a coin and rolls a number cube. Okay. Find the probability that the coin lands on heads and the cube lands on an even number. What you do is, if it lands on heads, it's uh, one heads out of two sides. So it's one half. And you have to multiply that by the probability of getting an even number. Well, there's six sides on the number cube, and there's three even numbers on that. So you multiply your probabilities. That'd be three out of 12. Or, what, one fourth? Okay, um, Patty tosses the coin and rolls the number cube 60 times. Predict how many times the coin will land on heads and the cube will land on an even number. Well, we take our one-fourth that we got from before and you multiply it by 60, which is 60 divided by 4, and that's 15, 15 times. Okay, and Rajan's. School is having a raffle. The school sold raffle tickets with three digit numbers. Each digit is either one, two, or three. The school also sold two tickets with the number 000. Which number is more likely to be picked? One, two, three, or 000? I would think that, well, let's see. Uh, let me return to this here. School sold with uh, three, each digit one, two, or three. Sold with, uh, mm hmm. Well, which one's more likely? It's actually zero. Oh, whoops. Ha ha. Zero, zero, zero. Because how many tickets have one, two, three on them? Just one. How many tickets have zero, zero, zero on them? Two do. So it's not, is it more likely? Not much more likely, but <laughs> technically it is more likely because there's two of those, not just one. Uh, suppose you know that over the last 10 years, the probability that your town will have at least one major storm was 40%. Describe a simulation that you could use to find the experimental probability that your town will have at least one major storm in at least three of the next five years. And so here you go. I jumped ahead and wrote this out. So uh, our simulation, we would use whole numbers from one to five and let one and two represent a year with a major storm. 3, 4, and 5 represented year without a major storm. Perform 10 trials by randomly generating 10 sets of 5 numbers and count the sets that model 3 or more storms and divide by 3. Oh, I'm sorry, divide by 10. Uh, sorry. Uh, is slight mistake here. Divide by 10. Okay. Uh, well, let me show you what this means. I have whole numbers. I like to use white against the black background. So uh, whole numbers one, two, three, four, five. And I said um, let one and two represent uh, a year with a major storm. So storm. And three, four, and five. Uh, oh boy, no storm. And and then I said. Uh, Form ten. Ran, we need to randomly generate ten sets of uh, five uh, numbers. 
And so let me do that. So it's going to be uh, sets of five numbers. So um, let's see. Uh, two, one, five, four, three. One, two, three, four, five. So three, three, two, five, five. And um, four, one, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, four, three, one, two, two, one, three, one. So how many are there? There are one, two, three, four, five, six. I need more. Uh, but, uh, one, four, five, three, two, uh, four, two, uh, four, three, five, five, three. Uh, four, five, two, one, three. And uh, so how many are there here? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one more. Uh, five, three, one, four, one. Okay, so there's ten years. Each row represents a year. And I said one and two represent a year with a major storm. And uh, three or more storms, okay. So I will three or more storms. So one and two. So uh, there's that two, uh, one, two, one and two, one, two, one, two. Um, okay, I did this. Now uh, back to this uh, there. There are uh, at least one major storm was 40%. At least one major storm was 40%. So, wow, <laughs> at least one major storm. Uh, in mine, I had uh, a major storm of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. In mine, I had 9 out of 10, which is 90% in mine. I was a bit of a mess. So, uh, yeah, my model... Mm, not so much like uh, the expected 40%, but anyway, there's the model and the experiment done. I hope this has been helpful for you and you learned a little something. Thanks for watching.